Yeah, we're not in the club, but we're right next to it. Me and my crew, we are country club adjacent. Country club adjacent. Country club adjacent, baby. Country club adjacent. Country club adjacent, baby. Thursday I go. Thursday. You know, that's a little late if you're trying to win the tournament this year, Rocco. Well, I'm I'm good enough to where I just show up just about ten minutes from my tea time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. No, I'm going. I'm I'm doing some announcing with Mr. Tarico on the weekend for Ooh. Serious XM. So Talk about to Mr. Mike Tarico. Yeah, the guy, the man, the legend. The, I'll learn. It'll be so much fun. Wow, that so, sounds fun. I'm, yeah. So they. So I do this radio show. They asked me to do. This will be the fifth one today, but um, then they said, "Do you want to do the? You want to be the lead analyst with Mike Tirico at Augusta National?" And I went, "You do realize I've never done this before, right?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't care. I said, "All right, I'll give it a shot." So, but being around him, and I, I've met him before, and I've watched him work years ago. I mean, he's just the master, so it, it should be fun. It should be I mean, fun. I could already tell from this Zoom call, it's going to be phenomenal. Yeah, just yeah. In the first, it's it, going to be it, much better than what's been on. And nobody's <laughs> ever been uh, canceled on live television before, so yeah, you know, I'm pretty excited to see that happen. Yeah. Well, it'll be the radio. Yeah, I'm like live I'm radio, radio Jake. Sport, so why not do it? <laughs> yeah, Sirius XM Radio. Did I not mention? Yeah, I did mention that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's what I'm doing. Good so for I'm you. just hanging out here. Then I'll go down Thursday and watch the guys hit some shots and then start talking about it. Wait, is it? It's cold where you're at right now. Where are you at? I'm in Minnesota, right? In Excelsior, Ooh. Minnesota. Ooh. Uh, is it cold? I don't know. Is it? Oh, my what? God. Yikes. What are you doing What is that there? stuff? Why Literally. are you well, there? We're just, here. we're just here. My my wife's from here, and we're here. Then we're probably going to make the migration. We're in Florida mostly, but I'll probably be Scottsdale pretty Ooh. soon. I don't know. Ooh, what part of Florida are you at? Well, uh, I'm in Naples a lot. I'm okay. in Naples. It just depends. Yeah, West Coast, West Coast guy. Nice, dude. That is yeah. the retirement community over there. I didn't know, right. Ro Rocco. I didn't know you were Jewish. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, just just the old born uh, uh, what uh, Italian Catholic they call. Yeah, me. Uh, the uh, exact the opposite, Mark. No, I'm the same <laughs> way. No, Italian Catholic, but I'm dating a J nice Jewish girl, and and they're the same culture. The Italians and the Jews, it's, same corporation. Mm-hmm. We're just the Jews cooking, with, you know, we can cook and yeah, stuff like we're that. Just it's Jews hilarious. with better food. <laughs> yeah, he does a whole Sebastian does a whole thing on that. It's so so funny. I mean, yeah. It's unbelievable. Right? Yeah. He's, he's so good. Rocco, being Italian, how has that affected your uh anger management on the golf course? Yeah, because I deal with it I, heavy. I tell you what, I don't even like let me see, thirty eight years now, never broke a club ever. Wow. Uh, on, on purpose, I should say, on purpose. Um okay. Uh, I don't get mad. I just, you know, you get disappointed. Um, I don't throw things. I don't, you know, I may say things to myself, but I never let it really, really get out. I never was that mad uh, um, on the golf course at all. You may hardly. say things, uh, you may say things to yourself. If you were mic'd up back in the day, would you have run into like a Justin Thomas situation? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was never. I mean, maybe I don't know. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it, I mean, they're just words. But yeah, I um, know. Um, and against no, yourself, Ralph Lauren. <laughs> against yourself, you could uh, you could be your worst critic too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've definitely called no, myself yeah, some bad no, names. <laughs> what, yeah. Oh, there's no question. Oh, yeah. Um, the the fun the funniest thing I ever said was, "You are so pathetic." How could they even let you play out here? Uh -huh. You know, stuff like that. That's uh -huh. where I'd go with myself. Uh -huh. yeah. You are the most. You are the most useless, no good. I mean, we've all gone through it, and yeah. whatever we do, yeah. do and remember? it's never nearly as bad as we think. But God dang, sometimes yeah. it's really like it's the end of the world. Exactly. Do you remember world. a moment where you said those exact things to yourself in a tournament? Uh, there were so many of them, I probably don't remember the exact moment. <laughs> yeah, I'm just wondering like because how your it, next hole went after you said that's something what I was like that say. to yourself. Like, how well, are they you know, letting you I, out I've here? always. I said something. I, I was doing this this outing, and not outing. I was doing something in a couple of years ago with a, a father who owned a big corporation, and his son, a nice little college, uh, excuse me, high school player. And we're on the first tee, and we're hitting some shots. We hit some balls first. We're on the first tee, and I said, "All right, here's what I want you to do." He goes, "What? What? What?" I said, "I want you to before you hit this shot, when you're walking up to the hit this tee shot, I want you to tell yourself how bad you really are at this game." 
And his dad looked at me, and, and he's looking, he's waiting. I said, hold on, I'm not done yet. I want you to tell your tell yourself how bad you suck at this game. <laughs> and then, and then I want you to prove yourself wrong. And his dad looked at me, and he went, oh, my God, that's this actually makes sense. I went, well, of course it does. It's called negative, turning a negative to a positive, because we all get up over shots going, oh, my God, I got no chance. Trust me, they've all we've all done it. And if anybody says they've never done that, they're def definitely lying. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Up there going, oh, my God, but let's see if I can prove myself wrong. So all of a sudden, the negative goes gone to the positive. So his dad goes, well, you know, I run a pretty big corporation. I have like a couple thousand employees. You think that would work at the, you know, the big meeting every year? Yeah. You just get up in front of the employees and go, listen, you are the worst bunch of employees. You people are absolutely useless to me. <laughs> now do me a favor and prove me wrong. <laughs> it goes up. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know if it worked or not. I mean, maybe we're not a business. <laughs> Man, that was, is that why it, you, that was the CEO of Enron, yeah, right? Yeah, that was literally about yeah, to say yeah, that. It was, that yeah, company it was, it was called it was that bank. It was that new bank, yeah. It was one of those, those companies. That was Silicon Valley Bank. Wow, yeah, dude, that's, yeah. that's crazy. That sounds like the, uh, but, the but DJ, DJ Khaled approach, you yeah. know? Like, they don't want you to win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, I mean, it is amazing because if you can take a negative to a positive, hard to do. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it was funny. He goes, would that work? I said, yeah, just, just give him a challenge. Yeah. Prove so, me wrong, guy. Prove me wrong. So I want to ask about the other end of the spectrum for that. So we got some notoriety in the golf world by uh, kind of roasting golfers. We do this thing called the back off challenge. Where yeah, we... it's absolutely priceless. Oh, I appreciate Thank it. You, Rock. Yeah. Right. That, that's that, legendary you guys, to hear from you. We're all you huge fans. Do. I mean, some of the reactions from the guys are priceless. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and you're a PXG reaction. guy. I don't know if you saw our PXG one, but uh, I'm that, not that's a probably PXG one of our guys. Oh, it used to be. I am the, not right? a PXG guy. No, no shouts out to PXG. Yeah, Jake. get out of here. No shouts no. out to PXG. <laughs> no. Did you no used to be? PXG here. I've seen you at a PXG. I used to hat. be, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, ever since uh, what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the owner decided to Obviously, that was the impetus for him to quit drinking. Jake. Yeah. yeah no, yeah. that was not a, see that was a couple years later. Okay. <laughs> that was about a year later, actually. Actually about a year later, yeah. I'd I'd love to get into a bit more on that, but I did like to to go off the back off things. Have you ever done anything intentionally to get in competitors' heads? No. No, it's you know, I don't first of all, what am I gonna possibly do? <laughs> yeah. No, I, you're an intimidating I, the guy. Thing I remember that, that made that really a funny comment was in the 08 Open, when I wore the red on Monday with no plan, just the only thing I had left, and yeah. Tiger wears red on Sunday. So I wasn't even thinking about it. And, and some people actually said this, which I think is hilarious. Hey, did you do that to get in his head? I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that would have really have affected him. That would have been yeah, the yeah. dumbest he, play ever. <laughs> he's very susceptible to that stuff. Yeah, yeah Tiger, he can give a shit. <laughs> you know, but, um, yeah, it, but no, I, I've never – intentionally done anything like trying to no well, i mean if anything i would have planted I, I would that guy if anything i would have said you nancy kerrigan you tanya hardinged him and you were the one that <laughs> broke his leg <laughs> yeah, well, i would have tried to push that narrative but i needed to break it more if I was oh break yeah it. you definitely needed to break yeah. it more yeah, yeah i mean it had to be like off i mean but <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and he still he still probably wins. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been, it, it, that was as close as it could about, have been. I mean, but speaking of that of that of Tiger, who I, I absolutely love, by the way, um, what he has gone through and what he's coming back from again is truly ridiculously uh, it, amazing. It, it's it's but it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't no, surprise me. It never does. I uh -uh. have been on the record every year saying never count him out you can't it's never it's insane it's stupid what he's gone through yeah, yeah. like when he he got in the accident a couple years ago uh everybody yeah. was like doing like like presenting it like he just passed away yeah and mark was mm -hmm. like guys he's not dead yeah no. people like, were wearing like red ribbons on there and it was like guys it's he was in a fucking car accident He's yeah. not dead. <laughs> like you guys are all yeah. like mocking him by wearing his shit. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I, I remember that it. was tacky. I do it was, remember it that. Was, it was so crazy. Mm -hmm. Mitch, bro. I'm excited to yeah, just. He... It, it's it's great to see how well TRT works, <laughs> and I'm excited for my future. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I want to get on Ozempic and Tess, baby. <laughs> I would not count him out this week. No, I wouldn't either. What wouldn't do you think? Either. You think you think he makes the cut? You think he hits? Uh, these are just some prop bets that I'm currently, you know, deciding. Does he make the cut? And yes. does he have more or less than ten and a half? By the way, that is a very inviting angle for you, Stotts. Um, well, it, it, <laughs> let's just put oh, it man. this way, and it obviously all depends on his body. Yeah. Because the the golf swing part is as good as it's ever been. Yeah. So if he's, I mean, did you watch him play at Riv? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was magnificent stuff. He putted yes. like he putted like someone else, not him. But yeah, that's um, true. He did not make he, any. He putts. was horrible. He was horrible on the greens for him. Um, but Tina Green, he was magnificent and on a pretty hilly up and down spot in, in, in places at Riv, but not like Augusta National. But yeah, um, if, if he can sustain that, he's physically in, in shape enough. Well, if the leg can hold for four days because he's playing light practice runs, it looks like there is no reason he, he doesn't contend. And people when I say that to people, they look at me like I'm crazy, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm not in that aspect. This is not a normal anything. No, this it's is not. the greatest that ever did anything on grass with the golf club. That's, just, that's just true. The way it is. I, I think He's the most well-rounded player in the history of our sport, period. I think if that's he if he gets his uh, putter, if he if he uh -huh. has his putter working, it, it absolutely he could be up there sitting in that top yeah, ten in striking good. distance. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Rocco, yeah. could we talk a little bit about uh, being under the influence a little bit? We've gone. Uh, oh, yeah. We've had some pretty good success. Me and Stotts uh, on videos where we have taken acid before our rounds of golf, mm -hmm. like in charity golf tournaments, things of that nature. <laughs> yep. And uh, it's we've had some good fun. We've hit some good shots. Great shots. Uh, we read, Reese, you know, you've been off the sauce for a little bit now. What are kind of yep. like the pros and cons of, uh, of getting off the sauce? Because uh, I'm sure you've played for so long on it. How, how, oh, yeah. How has it been? Yeah. Well, it was. I just decided one day that I was done, okay, and I just quit. So I oh, was boy. lucky that it didn't take more than that. You know, sometimes it does. I mean, sometimes it's in your blood and stuff. You can't just quit. It mm -hmm. just keeps coming back. It was just a habit, and it started from pain, all the back pain and all the stuff that I had. And I, I, I sometimes the only way I could play is if I had it with me. Would yeah. I be so smashed all the time? No, I would not be. But, but I would have it to where it would allow me. To play because my back was so screwed up at times yeah. not anymore but and uh, then Rocco have you ever heard of uh, marijuana <laughs> I have but I've never I you know truthfully I think I've done a couple of things with the pen a couple times but that's about it yeah. I, don't, I never yeah. smoked it I never not when I was young or anything like that I never really delved into that which is probably good because if I did I'd probably have pounds of it in the bag that's so, right. I, I always, so I you were know, <laughs> you, you were you were going out there and you were having some drinks and playing in tournaments. Are we talking about a little yeah. light buzz, or did you ever get to the point where you're like, man, I'm I'm pretty sauced I out here in, in the in the well, John Deere Classic? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> right. <laughs> me and me yeah, and Scott last times. time we took acid, uh, he was like, oh, this <laughs> stuff's kind of mellow. And then three holes yeah. in, we were like, oh sh Be like, shit. <laughs> why is there spiders walking on my arms right now yeah. while I'm playing? Yeah. Yeah, did you ever play a tournament and get to the point where you're like, oh, buddy? Yeah, a, a few times I was pretty locked up, I guess you would say. Locked but I didn't hurt. Bit. See, I didn't hurt, you which didn't is hurt. the key. When, so, at, okay. but, at first, but at first, I could have the alcohol with me, drink it whenever I needed it. To, and Because vodka, what vodka did for me was it knocked that pain out literally immediately. You know, 10 minutes, gone. Wow. So I could go do what I wanted to do and play. Hmm. And then, you know... It, I, I overdid it as I usually do everything. And um, then it started to be, I could play pretty good like that for a while. Yeah. Then it started to come all of a sudden. It started to overtake everything. Then it was useless. I was useless. Damn it. Um, just terrible. And then the pain went away over the years, but I still miss the feeling. There How? comes the habit. How part. did the pain go away, Rocco? Well, I just worked on it and did yeah. some stuff and, did, you know, whatever. Um, just got myself in reasonable shape for, mm -hmm. for me and stuff like that. And, um, but then I missed the feeling, the habit, you know, I was a morning guy cause that's when I woke up and it hurt. So I, I was a morning drinker. Mm -hmm. I didn't drink a lot at night. I was too tired. Oh, wow. 
So I would have thought it would have been opposite. I drank most of the day. I would have thought it would have been now. like day into night as opposed to morning. No, it was, it was morning. We're throwing vodka in the coffee? No, we're just throwing vodka in a bottle. <laughs> like a real <laughs> man, <laughs> Griff. No, no, Jesus. No, no, no. It, was, it was in a, you know, people ask me, and I don't care. I mean, I people say, well, did you drink while you were playing? I start, after I'm done laughing, I'm like, yeah. That's the only way I could play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but then again, like I said, the pain went away. After a few years, you know, here and there, and all, and I missed the feeling, uh, which became the habit, and I kept doing it, and it got even worse, and I knew it was going to be worse, and eventually I said, "That's enough." But I, so I luckily, can see I that vodka helping. Um, oh my god! Dull two yeah. different types of pain: one, the yeah. back, and two. If you're pretty sauced and you get like a bogey, you don't really like you don't care as much. That yeah, might be a nice laugh. thing, and that's good as a professional <laughs> golfer. You don't blow yeah. up and take that into uh -huh. the next hole. You're like, ah, whatever, dude. I'm feeling pretty buzzed. I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not bad. And I knew, I knew it was gonna. You know, I, I obviously it's it was it's not it's wrong, but it's wrong. I mean, it's just a slippery is. slope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's and and it's never gonna. You're never gonna beat it ever. No one's ever beat it, and and um. So that's what I did. I don't. People asked me how, and I said I just quit. I was tired of yeah, it. Magic, Magic Johnson beat it. Yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck. I don't. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, you, know so you touched. I, uh... I didn't want... <laughs> Mark, I got uh, something on that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on Magic Johnson. No, or no. I was just wondering if um, uh, I if the PGA Tour ever regulates anything like that. Um, are they are PGA Tour breathalyzing you? Are they making you take a field sobriety test on hole three if you're swerving? Well, that would be funny. No, um, like the tour back then, from what I understood, it, which was weird, if you ask me, or wrong, I guess Ooh. you'd say. They tested you for, now on the Champions Tour, they don't give a shit about us. So. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. We, I mean, Gosh. we can literally shoot up on the first tee. We're yeah. fine. Just Let's not go, back go. a couple of quaaludes. Sounds like our yeah, tour, Mark. Even, it, it, I mean, there's bars on every other, the pro ams on every other tee. I mean, you can do whatever you That's want. In our, in our so tour. sick. But on the on the regular tour, they have the, the Olympic blood tests. You know, the testing, which is fine. It's great. Mm -hmm. But they never tested for alcohol. Wow. I find that odd. That is interesting. Yeah, I mean, they tested for for everything else pretty much except. For alcohol, like they, huh. marijuana, God forbid, if you did that, you're gone. Yeah. Wow. Now what's worse? Now what's worse? We know. I mean, alcohol has got to be way worse than that than marijuana. Yeah. I mean, it has Dude, to be. There's there's no redeeming qualities with alcohol and what no. it does to your health and your body. There, no. True. You true. Know, there's really no redeeming qualities. That's why you mm -hmm. know I just I'm addicted to shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's a natural thing, See? and there's some some value. Yeah. It, it, absolutely, <laughs> and, and it makes you really happy on the golf course. <laughs> yeah, which is a good place to be happy. But, See, yeah, you know, all that, oh all that was crazy stuff, and you know, I didn't care that people knew. I knew they knew. Yeah, yeah. You think people knew? Well, of course they did. Yeah, they I mean, smelled your breath. Did. I knew that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to hide. I didn't try to hide. I mean, I guess you tried to hide it in a water bottle, but didn't really try to hide it. Yeah, I wasn't going to put like a bottle of Gray Goose in the bag or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think but that's it wasn't a water bottle. Rago, I think your yeah, neighbors are that. just looking out the window, and it looks like a Sopranos episode. Some Italian <laughs> yeah, guy be. named Rocco smoking a cigar, <laughs> and he's on the phone pacing with a, with a beanie, like he like, just he just <laughs> he just left. I'm the, pacing the, back and forth. The union I dude. <laughs> yeah, he had to escape the, in New Jersey to yeah, get out. Now he's in the cold. Let's take a break to pay some of our green fees. I want to take a minute to talk you guys about Encore Golf Balls. The reason why we're so behind this company is that they're making changes within the golf world. They are the first golf ball company in a hundred years to get the USGA to change the regulations on a golf ball. They started with like this hollow metal core and they submitted it twice and naturally the USGA turned them down uh, because, you know, we've never got turned down from a PGA or uh, <laughs> Yep. I don't understand how that could happen. But they kept appealing, and finally they made the USGA change. And with that uh, development, they got two of the top golf ball designers to sign on. Yeah, yeah. They brought on uh, John Calabria, 
who basically was one of the guys who developed the Titleist professional ball, was the guy who took the idea that balls could be better than balada balls and changed it to urethane. You know, from there, he developed the premium ball over at Maxfly. He then went to TaylorMade and did the TP5 after they were uh, after they acquired Maxfly. And then he's been, you know, the lead designer here at uh, our fam at Encore for the last seven years, along with... Along with Mike Jordan, <clears throat> who is a trained chemist in thermoplastics, who was on the lead design team over at the Pro V1 ball when that launched... Uh, did his little stint uh, with TaylorMade as well. Helped launch the Penta ball. Ooh, and now I remember has those. been on the Encore team for about seven years working in development. And this is why I'm so stoked on this ball. Is because they got all these guys on the inside yep. who stole all the recipes. Mm -hmm. And now you have the recipe in a cheaper and more affordable price. But just as good quality. Just as good quality. And tell us about those balls, Griff. Just like he said, you've got a guy that steals the recipes and brings them over. So if you ever had any question about, are these balls as good as the other? Yeah, you literally have the same engineer. So you've got, I've, I've played both their Vero X1 and X2 balls both great balls. So their X1 is for a uh, is for a little bit of a slower swing speed. It's got lower to mid compression. Um, they've designed the core for that MOI to be perfect for somebody that's like you know under 100 miles an hour. And then you've got the Vero uh, X2, which is what I've been playing lately, mm -hmm. and Same. that's uh, that's going to be a little bit higher compression. And I have played that right next to a Pro V1, and I'm telling you, it's just as good, if not better. And I know that because it's the same engineer that designed it. So, um, you know, you can listen to us and have us, you know, say things, but you can look at the facts of who engineered these balls and know the Vero X1 and Vero X2 are both legit golf balls. Absolutely. So also, just a little heads up, a little preview. Starting in June, you can buy custom country club adjacent back off challenge golf balls with our logo in collaboration with encore uh we couldn't be more excited about this to have our own golf ball uh you know you you buy a pack and you never know which back off you're gonna get that's right uh you know we're, we're writing them right now so yeah, uh, they're, they're, yeah. they're gonna they're gonna they're, they're gonna fuck up your dad on the golf course <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're gonna have a golf ball with a back off on it so you can just go literally read that and just feel what it's like to do what we do and trust me you're gonna enjoy golf a lot more that's right encore Want more? Encore. No, there was a dude on the European it. tour, I can't remember his name, that had his caddy bring uh, vodka in his bag and he always smoked a pipe. Does that ring a bell? Do you remember that dude? Oh, uh, that was Brian Barnes. Brian Barnes. Brian he, Barnes. He would yeah. like bring vodka and his caddy would like oh, sneak yeah. it to him and he would in smoke days, a pipe. In those days, that's what, you know, they did. That's what, that's what they did. It was yeah, fun. you were a gentleman. That was normal You were behavior? a gentleman back that then. That was normal yeah. then? I would, say, I would say not normal, but not completely off the chain either i mean yeah. it's kind of wow. oh yeah you know, golf has changed it's just like every other sport it's 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 a different game it's the same game they just play it different. so yeah, so do you do you think that the evolution of golf that these guys now are better than the guys when you were playing no i think this um first of all they're exceptional yeah i i am not the guy who says oh my god they're this and they're that they're remarkable people, players, athletes, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. They're not better. They're better younger. Mm. There becomes, mm. yes, think about it. Yeah. So I got on, Davis Love and I, and I, I don't mean to put myself in the same realm as Davis, but we qualified the same year. A bunch of us did. Back then there was only one qualifying school year. So we qualified the same year. We were, I, was, I qualified when I was 21 uh, in the fall of 1985. Okay, he was 20 in the fall of 1985. Okay. Davis was like these kids are now, ready. Davis was a guy in college. We'd finish our college run and go watch him play. Yeah. So that was Davis. Uh, so he, when he went out on tour, we kind of knew that he was going to be Davis Love. Yeah. The third, right? And he came out and played great. Then he won his second year and blah, blah, blah. Myself, I was like a deer in the headlights. I'm like, what? I can't beat these I have no chance to beat these guys. Yeah. I, I got to learn how to do this. I learned my first couple years on tour to, to play at a different level or to play whatever. 
I, I learned. You can't do that. You can't learn now. You better know. Yeah, you which, was, which was like the learning curve back in the day. Uh, yep. was like there was like a couple of years leeway, and mm -hmm. you would have to learn that. But nowadays, these kids, there's no. just hundreds of them, and they come in. Winning. They are ready, yeah. ready to go. That's like, what's amazing to me. It's yeah. like that classic Paul Azinger line to Tiger. Uh, oh, you'll like, learn. Yeah. Oh, you'll learn. You'll learn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah that was Curtis, yeah. Curtis Strange. Curtis oh, Curtis Strange. Curtis, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. He did. He learned really quick, like that week. You literally. <laughs> it's uh, not like that in other sports, though. You don't get guys coming straight out of college. No, basketball. Not, no. You, basketball. It, nowadays, it all is like that. Skateboarding. I mean, LeBron James. Skateboarding. Right basketball. Baseball, There's some exceptions, obviously. Football. But in general, like, there's just this flood of so many players that can just dominate a tournament whereas you have your phenoms in every sport but i don't know if there's as much of it hmm. no there is yeah, yeah it's, it's I, I think so right now i think that's like where it's going yeah in all sports is like this healthy because everyone sees the money in it yeah and so people yep. look at it as a business now yes. as opposed yep. to back then it was niche and it was like you just want to be revered. Yeah, you got to be, and 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 I think now because like so, there it is a business. There's like purpose behind exactly. well, parents like supporting their kids oh, yeah. and making yeah. them go into it and and turning them into TikTok influencers. Well, you can you yeah. get paid so much more. Like, how much money did you win for a tournament in 1985? Because now it's like four four point two million to win the players. Yeah, how much did you I, win I, a tournament for in '85? It was like what six hundred and fifty dollars. No, it was like it was like four. Forty bucks and some gas money. Yeah, it was like it was like free Chick Fil A. I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Did you my win that beanie? Win was, my first win was ninety one. Okay. okay. I won the biggest purse on tour at Doral that year. Two hundred and forty two thousand dollars was first place. Oh my god. Where, where, where's where's that money now? Would you say? Uh, I have no idea where any of it is. <laughs> if, you guys, if you guys see it, send it back. <laughs> but like for instance. In 1990, uh, I would say 1990, I, how about this? I finished, I'm just going to think about my numbers. I finished ninth at Pebble Beach, which was my one of my first top tens of my career, basically. Then I finished third at L.A. the next week. Combined winnings was seventy grand. Wow! No way! That doesn't even get you a yeah. Tesla now. Yeah, I spent more than yeah, on, on my I Kia. Know. And I think Fre Freddie won L.A. in 1990. I think it was uh, 90 grand. Yikes. First wow. place. No. Yeah, because it wasn't a million-dollar purse. Yeah, so why are you going to worry about your body that back then for 90 grand? Yeah, dude. I'm well, going to smoke a pipe. It, yeah, 90 yeah, grand? If you, if you think about it, it's all relative, really. I mean, yeah. I, you know what I mean? It's But not really. Now it's so uh, – what they're, what they're doing now, and every sport – the purses went up. Yeah, yeah, um, of and the money went up, obviously. And now the tour is catching up. People are losing their minds. Like, oh my god! I heard one guy say, "Well, they're playing for too much money out there." What does that mean? What yeah. does that mean? <laughs> no, what, it, well, what? That's just jealousy. Yeah. Well, uh, now what about the major league pitcher who works once a week for four, uh, 30, 40 million a year? Yeah, no, what, is that too much money? No, it's, it's, it's not no, too it's much all money. Well, what you get? It's all relative. I want to argue there is too much money because. It's not that I don't deserve the money, but now you have these guys playing for so much money that they're so boring to watch, and they, they, they're they awful. Whereas you played in the era where, I guess, Trevino was the talent. Trevino and yeah. those guys played for less money, so they had more fun. Oh like God, I could watch clips of him all day because there mm -hmm. wasn't as much pressure to win and as much money. So do you think money has taken the Trevinos out of the sport? Well, I don't know. Here's how I look at it. And I, yeah, that's a good point. But I don't think we ever, if money can influence the way you conduct yourself, that's odd. Uh huh. Um, um, I never, I, I'm not, I know, how, how could I say it? Trevino's year, uh, Nicholas Palmer's time, uh, Hogan's time, Bob, well, Bobby Jones didn't play for money, but he was just, plays the amateur. But um, it, it meant just as much. There was just no big prize because they didn't know. Yeah, I mean, who knew that purses were going to be twenty million dollars? Yeah, I did. I mean, who knew that was going I to happen? Know. Nobody. I mean, our first million dollar purse, I believe, was eighty eight. Ooh, I believe that's a good year. Um, and first year and first place is one hundred eighty thousand dollars. We're like, oh my god, that's that's ridiculous. You know, I mean, if you make the cut, you make like five or six thousand. If you make the cut, that's a billion dollars back then. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's relative. the same thing. It, 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 yeah, I think it's relative. I don't think. I'm sure when the guys come into the last hole this week, whoever it may be, 
with a one shot league going, Oh my God, I could win $5 million if I make par here. Mm-hmm. He ain't thinking that. No, he wants to win the jacket and then they get all the other shit comes after that. Yep. Yep. I, I never worried about how much money I was playing for going to win or lose. Cause they don't pay us till Tuesday anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sons you know, of bitches. Does, yeah. The bastards. Yeah. We have to wait till Tuesday, but, so I don't think that has any I, – I think the guys want to win not just because of the money because it's like they don't even – it's just normal to them. Yeah, 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 at this you point. You know, like, um, like last week at, uh, at – um, uh, what was that? San Antonio when um, – who won the San Antonio? Um, oh, my God. Uh, he's on the tip of my tongue. The Canadian kid. Great player. He won Corey this years ago. Yeah, Corey, Corey Connors won. Well, I think it was $1.8 million for that one, right? That's a normal – like a low end tournament yeah, now, like, whatever you want to call a, it. Like, that was a smaller North, event. Yeah, one eight one point eight million. I'm sure he wasn't on the last screen going, Oh my god, if I two putt, no, I'm but, gonna win. They're not thinking no one's if you are, you're gonna lose every time. Yeah. He is he's he is thinking think. about money though, because he's Canadian and he has to give away eighty five percent of that. Right. So he actually walks with the same amount of money that he if he would have won in nineteen eighty eight. Because, because, because of e- Justin which Trudeau. Makes it easier actually makes it easier for him to win. Yeah, yeah. that's true. He's yeah, less really pressure, dude. Any money. He's not really playing yeah. for big money out there, but, and that's, that's his secret. That's, I never thought of that. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. see, Canadians have an edge over us. Yeah, they that, No, uh, there you go. No, but um, it, it, it is fun watching, and now that I do the radio thing, I have to pay attention. I, I paid attention, but now i got to pay attention. Yeah. Because, uh, which is fine, which is fine. Um, Watching the press conferences today at Augusta, just yeah. because... It was good. It was good stuff. Tiger was exceptional. Rory was exceptional. Yeah. John Rahm, uh, Jordan yesterday was unreal. He had some things. So Jordan uh, said yesterday. Jordan said yesterday, which I, I, they all missed this. I didn't see anybody talk about this. He goes, you know, I don't have all the weapons, but the ones I do have are enough. Think about that comment. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's... I mean, that, I mean, this kid Jordan has been like that guy since he came out on tour yeah when he hit a shot this is this is why he's who he is and then remember when he won the u.s open at uh, in seattle up there at uh, whatever that what the heck was that place called um anyway starbucks uh, <laughs> yeah starbucks starbucks national chambers bay um, got it chambers bay yeah so he won the open there and you know it had dj three putted blah 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 but mm-hmm. on the 71st hole um um jordan's hitting a six iron six iron yeah, he hit it like 40 yards right of where he was looking, almost out of bounds with a six iron. I think he makes a double, then he hits it on the green in two, two putts, ends up winning the tournament. When they asked him about the 71st hole, his comment was, yeah, that didn't come off like I planned. <laughs> end of comment. Yeah. That was Boom. the end of the comment. Yeah. There was no like, oh, my God, this ha-. He didn't say yeah. anything, but, yeah, it just didn't come off like I was looking. Damn, dude. I need that's, to, that's different. I that's need to different. learn from him because I would have blamed every single thing that happened in that moment. I was like, there was a plane that was taken off yeah, at the tarmac. Yeah. Something happened. Yeah. It, but that, that's, that's why – there's just different. I mean, that's yeah, these kids are ready. Comment. These kids are yeah. ready. They came in. Yeah, ready. I mean, you look up and see that ball 40 yards offline with a six iron. It, it could be like heart attack time. I'm gonna, yeah. I would, I would, I would yell expletives and get fined by yeah. the PGA Tour. Yeah, I'd be like, yeah. Well, you might not anymore. Who knows? I don't yeah. know if that's illegal anymore. Um, right. Rocco, I always like to ask pros, what's the hardest course you've ever played? Um, uh, Chambers. I always say. Thing. I always say, well, actually, I know. I know the answer now. Carnoustie in 99. Carnasty? Yeah, that was that was the most – it was the coolest. It was really cool. But the the rough was wispy, but it was two or three feet high. Oh, my God. Oh, oh no. They had to use – they came in Monday with a combine to cut the rough at Carnoustie. <laughs> a combine. Wow. That's what so they use for, for corn, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it, it, it was pretty amazing, that place. But – most of the time, any U.S. Open course is the hardest course you're going to look at. Yeah. So, Rocco, I got to ask you, going back to the, the money discussion, if Liv was around in, say, like the early 2000s, uh, yeah. do you do you have a decision to make? Yes, you do. But you have a decision to make the right way. So it's like the kids, like, for instance, I use this example right here. You, you take Tiger Woods at the top of the mountain of golf. He's up there. Sam's up there with him, but probably not for long, okay? Because Tiger's going to do something, whatever. Um, 
then I'll just use me as an example because it's funny. So you got me down there somewhere at the base of the mountain. Okay. Well, you know, you 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 know, if you have a good caddy, a good Sherpa, you could get up a couple levels. Yeah, you, know, you, def- like you can definitely maybe, get maybe to like, you could almost see the peak. You could definitely get okay, above I, I base could, camp. I could, if I had binoculars, I could see the peak. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, so I can see the peak. Then you got guys between myself and Tiger, and below me, if there are any, right? Yeah. The PJ Tour, like them or hate them, gave all of us that played on the PJ Tour a chance to become whatever it is we became. Okay. A six-time winner, an 80 zillion time winner, a one whatever, whatever that is. Now all of a sudden, that ain't good enough. So now we're gonna badmouth the crap out of the very entity that gave you life, try to destroy them, and then we're gonna try to sue them to come back so we could play some. Mm-hmm. Now what is that what kind of sense does that make? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now they didn't all do it, but some of them did. Mm-hmm. Like DJ did, you know, DJ and Pat Perez, they just said, you know what, I'm done. I'm going to go do this. That's fantastic. Nothing wrong with that. But don't be the Taylor Gooches of the world and come back and try to sue to get back in the FedEx Cup when you already signed away your rights. Mm-hmm. You don't get to do that. Yeah, yeah. keep I mean, the same energy. Keep the same energy. You just, you just don't get to do that. So, yeah, don't so that's what made me mad about it. I'm not, I mean, and then Norman's been trying to do this for 30 years. Yeah. And he's going to fail again. Yeah. He's going to fail. Damn. Shots fired. The tour yeah. will not lose. They, we, we have everything. We have the people. We have the yeah. sponsors. We have the TV. And then you got the guys on the Instagram saying, oh, the PGA Tour's this, and they suck, and this, and that. And I always say, well, what did you watch last weekend? Yeah. it's, it's oh, like you, oh, you watched the PGA Tour, but I thought there was no good. You watched the PGA Tour, didn't you? Of course yeah. you did. It's like you yeah. break up with so, a girl, go to date a new girl, and then you're like, no, I want to stay together yeah. with you. I want both of you. Yeah. Um, so- yeah, I want everything. So, I want everything. Yeah. So you're. What do you see happening in 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 terms of this playing out in the next five years? Like, how do you see it going? I don't know that. It, I don't know that it. I don't know, because what I just saw is if you want to come back and leave the live tour, you got to pay them two or three times what they paid you. Right. I mean, you that's see? like so, that's really any job though. If you like lose your contract, right? Yeah. Like they made an investment into you. Uh, right. But but I, it's hard to say because I've never watched any of it, but. These great players that went over there, and there are a lot of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're you haven't heard a word about them. No. Yeah, they're gone, and it's yeah. sad. It's that sad. Is. Well, that's what's going to make Bryson's this week one so of my, interesting. Yeah, it's so far so good. I don't know. I I felt like there's going to be a fight later on at the, at the dinner. Oh but, yeah. Um, are there tensions? Yeah, I mean, are there any tensions? Did you hear right a thing? Now? Did you hear a there's, thing? No, no, no. But, Come on, no, give us an anything. exclusive, Rocco. No, we want I have, some juice. <laughs> we want some gossip. I've heard nothing, but. Okay. Some guys just don't care what they say, where they say it. They've yeah. already proved that. Yeah. yeah. They've already proved it. Yeah. And, and it's like Tiger said a little bit ago. He said, well, you know, it should be one way, but it probably won't be one way. You know how Tiger is with that comes to that. I think it, sh- it, it should be okay if you have any class at all. It should be fine. Right. But you never know. Yeah. Um, and wh- you know what? We'll probably never know what happens or what doesn't happen. And we yeah, don't belong we there because we're not a champion, so we shouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so so uh-huh. that that begs me to ask: What do you know that you're not supposed to tell that you want to tell? About what? About anything like a secret underground PGA tour story <laughs> from back in your day, dude. You don't have some, to name a name, but no is there names, any cool stories. Any weird shit that you know about that the public should know about that you can just kind of, you know, slide in here. Without saying names. I remember. I heard a story. This is funny. <laughs> there you go. That's all we want. That's this is a good one. This is a good one. I, I, and I, like I said, I won't mention names, but. Okay. It was at the old Jacksonville Open, I guess. I, I wasn't. It was before me. It was probably oh, the J.O. <laughs> yeah, so maybe, maybe, in a, yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, the, one of the guys who was leading went out all night and came back and fell asleep, like on the front, like stoop of the clubhouse. <laughs> you know, out all night. Caddy got there in the morning, found him, saw him. They went out, hit about twenty balls, won the golf tournament. Um, wow. Stuff like that happened back. That won't happen now. No. But I haven't heard any, you know, that was just a story. Who knows if it was even true? Mm-hmm. Um, but I haven't heard a lot of funny, weird stuff like that. I really haven't. Because um, really it doesn't, in, unless you're running with those guys, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. And I'm sure, I'm sure there's, I'm sure JD had to have a ton of good stories like that. Yeah, I was going to ask Rocco about JD because oh we my got God. the chance to, to play with him last year. 
Yeah. And, you know, uh-huh. like full handle of vodka to, to, the, oh, yeah. to the dome. And, and, some, and some beers. Back, back in your sauce days, did you ever get a chance to, to play with JD in one of those kind of like recreational rounds oh. or even on tour? Oh, yeah. We we play, we did that a lot, actually. Um, JD, Fuzzy, you know, Fuzzy Vodka. with Really good vodka, by the way. Ooh. Really good vodka. How much they paying you to say that? No, nothing. I haven't seen Fuzzy in years, but he, he'd have, they'd have it all out there. And we just would just kind of hang out. Um, and we had a great time. It was great stories, but um, it, it was pretty intense at times. Pretty intense at times. But, yeah, I can um, imagine, dude. I mean, oh, it, so, it, it was, was so much fun playing with him. It was probably the most enjoyable. Oh, JD is one of the best of all time. One of the most talented human beings you've ever seen in your life on a golf course. I, I love that. that. Scary um, talented. Scary. He's, I mean, silly. It's silly how good he is. He's 57, silly. has cancer, drank a bottle yeah. of vodka, had some beers, yeah. two packs of heaters, and he was still beating us. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's and out driving us. Of course. He is amazing because he can really put it down, and it's like he can still do normal things. That's amazing. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, I guess that's the tolerance part. Oh, yeah. well, the tolerance, yeah. I mean, you know, you look at his body. The guy is a fucking a Nordic <laughs> oh god, god for drinking. Yeah, he would uh, serve. He, he, him and the cockroaches would yeah. survive a <laughs> nuclear holocaust. Rocco, oh, yeah. uh, we want to thank you so much for having us. But I, real quick before you go, um, you were the first person to win with a long putter. And yeah. me, I have a uh, 40 mile per hour swing speed, and I've been playing old man golf since day one. Can you uh-huh. give us any good tips to save my back or my legs or anything that you do nowadays that you should have been doing back in the day? You mean putting or just golf? Putting, here? anything in general. I got a real frail body. <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what you need to do. If, if you send me frail and 40 mile an hour swing, I will I will look at it and tell you what you should do. But there's certain things anybody can do to <laughs> To take stress off the body, trust me. And that's what I see about these kids watching the kids swing. Um, to make it go the distances they make it go, certain things have to happen. And the body does not like any of them. Okay. And with the amount of speed they create, things will break. The body, it just will. I mean, it, it's not even, it's, it's, a, it's a fact. That's why I hurt um, my neck, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, yeah. But, you, but you can tell, the first thing I look at with someone that says, take a look at this guy or... I work with a, 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 one of my buddies from home who's, who's going to be out there soon. First thing I look at is, the first question I ask them is, how long do you want to play? <laughs> and if they say forever, I say, well, we got work to do. Okay. Because that shit ain't going to last because it's going to hurt you. It might be oh. good, but it's going to hurt you in the long run. You look at these guys going down. You know, a lot of guys, you know, Bryson went down, and we know why. It just hits too hard sometimes. Mm-hmm. Body won't, doesn't like it. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched a guy the other day on the Instagram made a swing, a long driver, and went down, and he's in the hospital because he blew out a rib and something. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> yeah. might have been there for that. Oh, we, were, yeah. we were there for that, and it was – Really? It was his intercostal, intercostal muscles just, like, something I think, blew tore, up. and it was yeah, terrifying. Done. This is a oh. large, massive, grown man. On a lot of steroids. Uh, that was the steroids. one I saw then. And he broke down <laughs> and cried like us. And I felt like, oh, my, I was in pain watching how much pain he was in. Yeah. It, but yeah, send me videos. You got my number. I want to see it. All right. Bet. I will, Rocco. Uh, Rocco, have the best time uh, at Augusta this week. Uh, yes, dude. Couldn't Thank be more you jealous. so much. We yes. got to get on the course sometime. Yeah, Rocco, we got we to gotta hey, take you down, let, man. Let's do it. I'm, I'm ready to be taken down. All right. Hit us up next time you're in L.A. And uh, continued success to you this year on the tour. Yeah, we'll come out <laughs> and play in the snow. <laughs> Anytime. Keep, keep up the good work. All right. Thanks, Rocco. Thanks, brother. We'll see yeah, you have a good one. Bro. You're a legend. Right. Also, guys, it is Masters week, and I cannot watch a Masters without placing some bets. That's uh, right. This, this and the Super Bowl, the only thing I bet on. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I make it a little bit loose. <laughs> but uh, specifically the Masters, I will be betting on Bet Online. If you're on a laptop, it's betonline.ag. Mm-hmm. I've looked through. I have. I have scrubbed. Bet online for some of the best prop bets I've ever seen. Like they have on, on their website, will a live logo be shown on the telecast? Oh, and in, in my head, that is an automatic dub because the players, unless they don't allow them to wear their shirts, they have live live, live logos 
on the collar. So hammer that one. Ooh, that um, that is a hammerable one. Dang, that yeah. is a good bet. That's an incredible <laughs> bet. Yeah, yeah. Dude, like we have that insight. Like I know that they have the logos on there. So unless the masters like last minute be like, hey, you can't wear these. You can't wear live on your t-shirt. Which I don't know why they would do that. Hammer that prop bet. But regardless, <laughs> somebody in the crowd. I guarantee yeah. you, somebody in the crowd does it to troll. Yeah, exactly. Um, so they also have great bets. Like, will Tiger get? Uh, uh, will he withdraw? You know, I think he's in great shape right now. I think this is the one tournament he's like gonna get through. Despite he got through last year. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's an easy one to hammer. And then obviously you have player matchups. Who, uh, who's gonna beat who mm -hmm. each day? Uh, then you can pick the overall winner. Um, then just like uh, prop bets to me are the most fun, dude. Like, is the is the winning player gonna hug his girlfriend first, or his his uh, you know, uh, or his, his wife? mom, <laughs> girlfriend <laughs> or wife? Which one? Um, and yeah, like that's all on Bet Online. And then also, you know, if you get bored of golf, they have poker out there. They got blackjack. Ooh. Once you're in, you're in. Look how excited he's yeah. getting. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead, Bet Online, exclusive partner, betting partner of Country Club adjacent for Masters. That's weekend. right. Use our code. Uh, but there's a link in our bio. Uh, there is a link in our bio to use Bet Online. Go ahead and click that link. You know it helps. It helps. Uh, it helps us out a little bit if you click that bad boy. So uh, there you have it. Bet Online. BetOnline.ag. If you're on a laptop, happy winning. Man, that was a little outro on the Rocco Media. Dude, what a legend that guy is. Fucking Rocco is so sick. Dude. Wow. Dude. <laughs> so I didn't know cool. what to expect, but that was way fucking way more dope than dude, I just expected. Just hopping out and pacing in his garage. He's just paced in the same spot in the garage right where if somebody closed the garage door, <laughs> it would have just hit him on the head. Yeah. Dude, it's so funny because that's how I talk on the phone. Mm -hmm. I just walk around in a circle. Yeah. Yep. And I feel great about it. And yeah. every, like anytime I'm doing it, people are like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Shut up. I have He definitely has ADHD. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, that, we're going to start doing a like hopefully every week get a call in because now we have this great setup here at the studio. So uh, hopefully a lot more tour pros and, you know, just great personalities. Next week, we have uh, Chad and JT on the podcast. Wee -wee. So look forward to those fellas coming in. We got to make some room on the couches. That's right. Um, yes, sir. And uh, yeah, guys, um, again, uh, April 28th, we're going to be in Palm Beach mm -hmm. and we're doing another country club adjacent golf tournament. All at the range there using Top Tracer technology. Uh, the last one was sold out. It was the most fun. Um, and it's kind of, you know, like uh, an ideal way to, to play in a golf tournament. So. Yeah. And that's uh, my hometown. So, uh, you know, I come on down, uh, all the high school friends. There come you go. on down, See high if you're really friends. friends. Yeah. Damn, dude. Seriously. Damn, dog. Sub we to our friends. YouTube, too, guys. Sub to our YouTube. Watch our videos. We spent a lot of time filming and editing, and we put a lot of time. Uh, 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 into it. Shout out to the homie Lift God, who is out there in the fucking heat. Shout out to the homie Matt, who's fucking not in the heat. Sometimes, Sometimes he's, in the, he's baby in the heat, but he's in like the bedroom heat, and he's fucking yeah. just he's uh, having genius, sex bro. and editing. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> okay. we love him. So if you support us, you're supporting our family. And uh, merch drop coming soon. Woo! Big we got merch, a fire big merch. sweat kit, a fire hat, a fire shirt. So make sure you be on the lookouts. Cop that shit when it happens. Guys, we love you. We love, love you so much. Thank you for not showing up to my fucking shows in San Diego. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. That was Catch these hands, yep. bro.